uh, hiri hiri hiri, the uh, uh, Parks Committee meeting for August 12th. Um, roll call. Uh, Alder Gerlach. I'm here. Alder Burnett. Here. The chair is here, Scannell, and Alder Weary is excused. I'll take a motion to approve our agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have an agenda. I'll take a motion to approve our minutes from our last meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Alder Gerlach, seconded by uh, Alder Burnett. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Are we ready to go or did I go too fast here, James? Should I slow it down? Um, give, me, give me one second. Certainly, you take a couple seconds. That's why I have my camera off actually, so you don't see me <laughs> trying to do civic clerk and all this same, same time here. I'm just. Ah. Um, <clears throat> now we are ready for regular, regular business. business. Yep. Okay, number one, consideration with possible action on the staff's proposed phasing plan and budget for the the Shoreline Beach Project at Bay Beach Amusement Park. Staff. So, um, I will mention, um, <clears throat> while talking about this, uh, item one and item two the, in the agenda are closely related. So, at any time, if you guys have, uh, if you've looked ahead here a little bit, um, kind of one goes hand in hand with the other. There are gonna be two, two separate motions, but if you want to talk specifically about either the refinance plan uh, in agenda item number two, uh, then you'd have to make a motion to hold and then go, jump to agenda item number two. So just so you guys are aware, I'll talk about kind of, I'll start with item one. Well, Let's, James, can we can we just take them both up together and just, but when we uh, take action on them, separate them? That'd be fine. Well, I'll take a motion to uh, take uh, items one and two uh, together as one item. So moved. Moved by, by Second. <laughs> moved by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll take those together, but when we take action, we'll separate them. There we go. Go ahead, James. Did we lose James? Uh, no, I'm still here. One second. Oh, okay. Just to have some people in the says in the waiting room, I'm trying to admit them here. Ah, uh, you're really multitasking. All right, so the first gen of items. So at the last, uh, uh, at the park committee, actually not the last one, but the park committee on June 10th, all right, we presented a phasing plan and a budget for the beach project at Bay Beach Amusement Park. If you recall, there was quite a bit of discussion about the current high water elevations how does the high water affect the timing of the beach, insul beach installation, budget shortages, and a phasing plan? At that meeting, the president of the Friends of Bay Beach spoke and addressed his concerns with the budget, high water elevations, and the existing bond payment structure. Since that meeting, uh, Parks Com uh, Park Committee meeting, we have been in discussions with the Friends of Bay Beach, the mayor, the finance director, and Jim Schmidt to revise the phasing plan and refinancing plan to alleviate any of the concerns that the various parties addressed. Uh, what drove this new phasing plan is a desire to hold on the construction of the swimming beach until the water levels go down a bit and save up some funding over the next few years to pay off a portion of debt in 2026 and refinance the loan at that time. So if you remember back in, just to give you a little history here, back in 2018, the, the city approved going ahead with the construction of the pier, sand beach, shoreline walkway, bathhouse, and concession stand additional uh, and also additional paved parking. The anticipated budget for this project was $7 million and the proposed funding sources at the time were $1 million in grant funding, $1 million in fundraising dollars and $5 million in city bonding. And in 2018 the city did bond $5 million towards this project and the revenues from Bay Beach were to pay for the bond payments. So since then uh, since that time, we have been began securing grants, and Jim Schmidt began fundraising efforts. And to date, we have secured 
$425,000 in grant funding out of the $1 million goal, and the fundraising commitments to date total $723,000 out of the $1 million goal. That leaves us with about a $825,000 shortfall out of the $7 million budget from the original funding plan. Uh, Jim Schmidt is still committed to continuing the fundraising efforts and is hopeful he can reach his $1 million fundraising goal. I just want to make note that in phase one of this plan, um, those dollars needed um, are not needed for to, to start and to complete phase one. So in the in lieu of the, the we'd be still seeking more grants, more fundraising. You know, we'd also hopefully more revenue that we could put towards it. Uh, we'd work on you know donations of materials, and also remember we have a, a pending lawsuit out there. Um, so hopefully out of out of those areas, um, we can still meet our goals in, in that shortfall. So you'll see in this phasing plan that three new projects have been added to the project list that they were never previously uh, discussed. This includes the replacement of the Falling Star Ride, the installation of a stormwater pond near the entrance of Bay Beach, and modifications to the train ride which are necessary due to conflicts with the installation of the bathhouse. These three projects added a total of $1.6 million to the scope of the work uh, when you include a 10% contingency for this work. So due to the new projects added to the scope of work, the fact that we are a little short of the original budget amount and the desire to set aside funding from now until 2026 and then refinance in 2026, we are proposing a new budget for the project, which includes funding from the access revenues from Bay Beach and, $1 million, and a $1 million donations from the Friends of Bay Beach. In this proposed phasing plan, phase one projects, uh, phase one projects will include $30,000 for additional pier engineering, 2.1 million for the installation of the pier, 535,000 for the shoreline walk, 190,000 for site work and erosion control, 550,000 for the installation of the stormwater pond, and 340,500 for a 10% contingency. Um, unfortunately, due to some of this, uh, the pier will likely have to be reduced in length in order to keep in line with the $2.1 million budget for the pier. The Parks Department recently completed a site-wide stormwater management plan for all of the amusement park. In Phase 1, a stormwater pond will be installed near the entrance of the park. This pond is sized approximately to accommodate all future development on the eastern one-third of the property. This pond is required to be installed prior to the installation of the beach, bathhouse, and shoreline walk. And there is enough funding in place and the engineering is nearly completed to all the work uh, associated with phase one as I mentioned before. So then we get into phase two which will include $500,000 for the replacement of the Falling Star Ride, $1,860,000 for the beach, grooming equipment, bathhouse and utilities, $450,000 for the relocation of the train ride, $550,000 to pave the gravel parking lot near the entrance and another $286,000 for a 10% contingency. These projects will be built in the priority order shown in the plan and would not be constructed until there is adequate funding available in the Bay Beach account. This funding could come from the following sources, uh, which I kind of mentioned before, additional fundraising, additional grants, a pending lawsuit, or excess revenues from Bay Beach. We will not need to secure any additional bonding to complete this work. The work will only start when there is adequate funding in the Bay Beach development account. In addition, the beach and bathhouse would not be installed until the water levels drop a minimum of 12 inches or upon an agreement between the city and the Friends of Bay Beach. If this phasing plan and refinancing plan are approved, the Friends of Bay Beach will donate $500,000 to replace the Falling Star in 2021 and an additional $500,000 to go towards debt reduction in 2026 when we look to refinance. Unfortunately, the Falling Star Road, um, you know, speaking of the Falling Star, it, uh, unfortunately it broke down in 2019 and is, is too expensive to repair. Uh, the ex uh, repair expenses would cost over $700,000 just to purchase the parts necessary for the repair. That does not include the labor to take the entire ride apart and piece it back together. It is much more cost effective to simply just purchase a similar used ride for approximately $500,000. Once a ride is selected, we will update the park committee on the specifics of the donated ride. You also see this that this plan includes adding funding 
from Bay Beach excess revenues from 2021 through 2025. This funding will go into the project, which will allow the city to accumulate a lump sum total of $1.9 million, which will be used towards debt reduction in 2026. This will drastically reduce the total interest payments Bay Beach would incur compared to the existing financing plan. And I will discuss those details of the proposed financing plan um, now, um, unless there's any questions at this moment, but I'll just, I'm thinking we just, I'll go through the refinancing plan and then answer questions after I'm complete here. That's fine. So speaking of the, in more focus on the refinancing plan. So back in 2018, uh, like I mentioned, the city took out a $5 million bond. This bond repayment plan was set up a little differently than most bond payments. Uh, in this plan, payments began in 2019. From 2019 through 2023, it was interest only payments were to be made. Payments on the principal does not begin until 2024 and will continue through 2038. In this payment plan, a total of $2,413,282 in interest will accumul accumulate through the duration of the payments with a total average payment of approximately $430,000 every year from 2024 through 2038. So we are paying $193,063 each year from 2019 through 2023 just in interest payments alone. Per the bond payment agreement, the earliest the city is able to refinance the bond is 2026. And we are not able to change any payments from 2019 through 2023. In the proposed refinance plan, we're proposing to set aside funding from excess Bay Beach revenues so that we can pay off a lump sum of 1.9 million in 2026 when we refinance the bond. That would come from the $400,000 in 2020 and $500,000 each year in 2023, 24, and 25. So if this phasing plan and refinancing plan is approved as proposed, the Friends of Bay Beach will also donate, like I said, another $500,000 in 2026 to go towards debt reduction when the bond is refinanced. The final change we are proposing is to give $750,000 out of the original $5 million bond to other park projects in 2021. The city in turn would then take this on as debt along with the associated interest payments of the uh, $750,000, sorry, which comes out to $152,221. Unless nearly all of the park projects are eliminated from the upcoming 2021 bond requests, the city would then have to bond for upcoming park projects anyway. So this has been reviewed um, with the finance director and she supplied the payment information for this document. By, these, by making these changes, uh, you can see that Bay Beach's interest payments go down from $2,413,282 to $1,507,111, which is a total savings of $906,171. In addition, the final payment would occur in 2033 instead of 2038. Finally, the approximate annual payment starting in 2026 would drop from 430,000 down to 225,000. So each year, Bay Beach accumulates additional revenue after the expenses are paid. This funding is placed in the Bay Beach operations account, and on a yearly basis, the city council has to approve the internal transfer of funds from the Bay Beach operations account into the Bay Beach Development account. This ensures that the allocated funding goes towards the approved projects. And we would recommend that if this plan is approved in the motion, you give staff the authority to transfer the funds on an annual basis to implement the refinancing plan as presented. Um, I also do want to mention that in your packet, there was a letter of support um, from the president of the Friends and the, and the Friends group um, on this um, both phasing plan and refinancing plan. And with that, I will open the floor for questions. Or you will open the floor. I will take questions. All right. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Say care to me? Oh, yeah, right I have some. Yeah, if I could. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, James, thank you for that. That was uh, very informative. Uh, wasn't the Falling Star a relatively new ride? When did we install that one? Um, the exact date of installation, Jason, are you on the call? Did you know, remember the exact year we installed that? Yeah, the first year that we ran it was actually in 2017. Uh, 
Uh, we did all the work on it in 2016. However, it is a, a ride from 1984. Uh, so uh, we put a lot of work into that ride, but unfortunately with some of these rides, uh, just uh, some things can happen that might create uh, this kind of expensive repair. So that's that's one of the chances we, we took with this ride. Okay, I thought it was no. So thank you for that. Um, second question, James, you had mentioned that so far the grants received are 425,000, 23,000 for the donations. That's $825,000 short. Uh, you had mentioned that you believe that there are opportunities being sought. Uh, could you give me an idea of how secure the parks department is that that gap would be covered? Yeah, we're through yeah. fundraising and grants. Yes, we, we're very we're very confident. Um, we were talking with Dan. We're very confident that between uh, grants, fundraising, more revenue, and also uh, looking at you know maybe even getting some of the materials donated. Uh, for example, getting all of the sand donated is is an option on the table right now, and also with the pending lawsuit uh, between those. Um, funding resources we feel very confident that that 825 can be made up um i don't want you to share anything that shouldn't be shared publicly but on that lawsuit what are you referring to could you just briefly explain uh, unfortunately i cannot right now so it is in uh, it is a pending lawsuit uh, you'd have to that's fine you, you don't need to say any more thank you uh the other thing is the retention pond that's a relatively new idea out there isn't it I don't recall seeing that. I think it's something that was considered um, in this plan that needed to be done anyway. Uh, when we proposed the beach pier, bathhouse, concession stand, and the additional paid parking, um, it is something that was um, part of the grand plan with this project, yes. Okay, so with the surface parking and cement and runoff area that the retention pond is needed as far as the parks they're concerned and not just parks yes uh you know DP, dpw and yep okay all right thank you no other questions chairman my kids are fighting i gotta go straighten them out real quick <laughs> you're temporarily excused uh <laughs> the joys of of home uh, committee meetings uh alder stoyer thank you chair um James, you mentioned something on um, the remaining pier construction being $2.1 million, but yet with the, with the adjustments that are being made that you might have to shorten the pier. It's the full length of the pier right now under planning and then what that, that would be if we had to adjust that. Um, what, what would the length you're asking what the length well, would be uh, with the short period? You mentioned period, you mean? something about making the pier shorter, unless I misheard. No, yeah, uh, I mean, with the with working um, currently with the budget of $2.1 million, um, just to give you an approximate idea, and this would, of course, um, it could change slightly, but to give you an approximate idea, the, the pier was originally planned for 450 feet, and so we might have to reduce that by approximately 100 feet. That's a general approximation, though. So is that going to, in your estimation, will that compromise the project quite a bit? Because, you know, it's like anything else, you know, 450 would be better than 350, I guess. But uh, in your estimation, you still feel that would be more than adequate and it still would be a real great amenity, even at that length. Yeah, due to the, you know, the piers, um, you know, that's a fishing pier, I guess, and 350 feet out still provides a lot of access to opportunities for people to fish and to, uh, it'll still be a pretty grandeur looking pier at 350 feet that's well over a football field um, right. it, it might not be uh, i heard uh, rumors that it would have been the longest pier on the bay i guess at 450 but it might um it might not be the longest pier on the bay anymore but it's still going to be a very uh, prominent feature out of bay beach so depending on on the budget here and all that i mean is that a, a cast in stone then or until we vote on it what's your take um in order to yes in order to approve starting because we have the funding in hand right now to do phase one projects so in order to do that yes it would be something that we would prefer you know keeping it at the 2.1 million dollars and 
that would get us in budget for phase one. Okay. And now when you start phase projects like this, you know, you, you kind of are cast in stone once the money is brought forth. Can, can that change a little bit? Let's say, let's just say, for example, a peer would be extended if the funding would come in. Could you alter somewhat once the project starts? I mean, I would have to probably refer that question to somebody uh, more familiar with how, but I don't believe so. I believe once you bid out a project, as it is. That's it? Yep, okay. that's it. All right. That's all I have for now. Thank you, James. Anyone else? Chairman, this is Kathy Lefebvre. Um, yes, um, James, you're talking about the retention pond. Are you going to use the existing little pond that was uh, – it's on the north side of Eshaw Drive that has been cut, it used to go through to the other ponds. Um, are you going to utilize that? Um, the specifics of, of the pond, where it's located, um, and all that I think will be uh, part of the plan going forward. I don't know exactly you know, how that looks at this point. I don't know if it'll be tied into that little existing pond that you're referring to or if it's going to be, I do know, uh, based on uh, the conversations here, what did I? Um, it'll be towards the. I'm trying to just look at my notes here. Sorry. Um, it'll be installed near the entrance of the park. So, and if you remember, I think you know in the in the grand scheme of thing, the entrance of the park is also, you know, changing at some point or was proposed to be changed at some point. So I don't have the exact location for you on that, Kathy, but um, we can get back to you on that. I know there were plans to take it off of Eshaw Drive, which I would would uh, completely deny. I, no, don't bring it off Eshaw Drive. That's the worst place. I mean, you'd have so much congestion there. Where you have it now, I think, is much better. And it would save you money, I would think, to utilize that little pond already it's there and the only reason um, that field floods at times is because it's not graded properly into that little pond i would think that they would use that instead of building another new one uh, i don't understand because you already have a parking lot there too where the ball diamond is so i don't know where you would put it i'd like to <clears throat> i'd like to see that plan because it, it doesn't i can't picture where you could put it by the entrance, because you have a building, you have the parking lot that you're, I assume that part of your paving is that gravel lot that you put in, you're gonna pave that. So I'd like to see where you're actually putting it. And I would think, if you really look, I would think that little pond can save money uh, without putting in a brand a new one set. I wish you'd look into that. Well, I'm, I'm sure they I are. That before to Jan. Jan. I'm, I'm, you know, we'll, uh, James will get you that information. And uh, is there anything else? Um, yes. I'm glad that they're waiting, but I think they're going to have to wait a long time for that bay to go down. And I, a lot of people along here, <clears throat> along the bay, at, at this point, they are not in favor of that beach at all. That water would have to go down quite a bit in order to put a beach in. So I think, yes, you, you're going to have to wait, and you might have to wait years to put that in. So I'd be careful with all this bonding that you're doing. <clears throat> I know you're reconstructing your bond, which is good. I'm glad that we're saving some money, but that's a lot. And then also, I would have liked to have put a proposal in, but because we are bonding this, that there are other things that, are, that the parks need some of them are big projects probably coming up. I know there was the ball diamonds and relocating the soccer field, and I believe we did bond for that. I think it was like 600000 These are things that Bay Beach should be helping with because this is a lot of money that we are paying, <clears throat> and our budgets are really low now. Our budgets are so bad. I think we have to be very careful what we're doing because we have no idea what's going to happen even next year. 
So I just want I want everybody to take a deep breath and really look at this. Okay. okay. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Alder Gerlach. I just have a couple of questions, please. Um, one, um, I don't know anything about building piers, but um, if you built this pier to 350 feet, and then in future years, I'm not talking about um, you know extending it after it's you know started or anything like that, but in future years, could it be extended to be the original uh, plan? Is that physically possible? Um, I think I think that becomes. From what I understand, um, that situation would not only become very complicated when it comes to permitting and future and, and also budget. So, I mean, I think the, you know, right now. I'm talking, we, excuse me, James, I'm talking like three, four, five years down the road when it's all done and, they, and we're in a financial position to do that. Is it something physically engineering possible? Well, once again, I'm, I'm uh, and unfortunately, I can get back to you on that. Um, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I think from my personal feeling, I think anything can be uh, done. It's just a matter of uh, what that means to do that. So, you know, it, whether it's additional permitting and also the budget that would take. I know from what limited uh, I do know about the, the pier, I know it has, you know, there's a certain amount of footings that have to be in place. Um, you know, and at that time, you'd have to extend it with, um, a lot of additional resources. So I, I don't know if that's something, it's always something we could look at in the future. Um, I just think it would come with a pretty hefty price tag and I think it would also be uh, the permitting and those kind of things would have to be addressed. Okay, that's fine, not a big deal. Um, also, I wonder if you or Director Ellen Becker could just tell us how is the um, um, revenue from Bay Beach going to look this summer compared to other summers? Um, well, I, I would, um, I think we're, I don't think we have the, you know, our projections in quite yet. Um, I guess I would refer probably to Jason to give you an idea. Um, you know, it is, of course, less than in the past. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, Jason, do you have any specifics, I guess? Or I know when I talked to Dan, he said we were still waiting for that to be consolidated for this month. So he didn't have the exact numbers for me. Yeah, I mean, when, it, when you're talking about gross revenue, um, that's probably the easiest way to describe it right now. Uh, we'll probably be about between 2.5 and 2.8 million dollars down this year. So it'll be, it'll be significantly down from from last season. Okay, thank you. And then just two quick questions. Well, one quick question. I'd, I'd like to. I think I heard you say, James, that Director Ellen Becker has looked at all these figures and she's con she's comfortable with that with it. I would just like to hear her say that, please. Um, yes, I worked with um, Director Dishite, and I also had some conversations with Dave Charles from the Friends. And again, as James had said earlier, we did already bond $5 million um, in 2018 for this project. So since things have changed and because it was principal only, um, the interest was very high on this um, bonding. Um, so with the recommendation, we've been working with our bond council and actually financial advisors. So, um, and they've, they're the ones who actually re-ran the scenarios for the parks department. Um, that uh, it's very, very comfortable, something that we can do. It will certainly save some interest. And again, the one thing, the only caveat is the principal that being funded by the city, the 750,000, that is just an assumption that in 2021, as we're going through the whole CIP, um, in the past, we've been, we have typically been improving somewhere around 700 to a million dollars for parks projects. This is assuming that next year when we're going through the CIP, we find about $750,000 that are approved by council and instead of taking out new borrowing, um, we would do some, some financial moving of dollars around. So no longer charging Bay Beach for these projects that we would actually then um, charge the city for. And uh, really for the total city, it'll actually reduce our debt by 750,000 because we, if we didn't shift this, we would actually borrow that extra money for parks. So it's certainly a, um, an item that we've talked about, certainly something we can do internally. That's an assumption that 750 is um, approved in pro parks projects but it's something internally that we would do and, and overall um, certainly would help out um, the, the Bay Beach and all their, um, the interest payments. Okay, thank you. My last 
Question. Um, Alder Dorf is on the call and she is the finance chair and I would like to hear her say what she thinks about this financially. Not to put you on the I spot. Think, no, I'm, I, no I, I look at that. I, you know, we, it's been bonded for, it's been in the hopper for a while. We know what we're doing. I, tr I trust that James and, and the fi finance department really know what they're doing. Yeah, too bad we have to knock off 100 feet of the pier, but it's not a, a killer for the project at all. I think, and then plus the savings that they're projecting, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with that. Then I think it's about $900,000, wasn't that right? Um, James, yes. when you went through all those yeah. numbers? 906,000. Yeah. That's really good. Good job. So I'm very, very comfortable with that. Thank, thank you for asking, Alder Gillak. Yes, thank you. I'm all done. Okay, I just hate to, it's part of it is a savings and part of it is a shift. Shift is moving some to general fund. So that's why it's a savings on the Bay beach side. But then also um, the idea of that um, Bay Beach is gonna be saving their revenues for the next three, four, five years. And then in 2026, they're gonna, if you look at the schedule, you'll see in 2026, instead of a, making a, a payment of a couple hundred thousand, they're gonna be paying about $2.6 million. That's, where you're, that's why you see the savings. But we also have the shift to the um, general fund picking up a portion of that money, um, the expense. I notice, uh... Mr. Charles is with us. I don't know if anybody has any questions or would like to hear any comments from him. I don't know if he'd like to make any comments, but we could certainly open up the floor for him if he would like, or if we have any questions for him. Mr. Charles, would you care to pipe in at all or? I'm just listening. I think everybody's doing a great job. They spent a ton of time. That's why I wrote the letter saying, this is what we need to do and I hope you all of as Dan put it together. Okay, so um, do you have anybody have any questions for Mr. Charles? We'll open up the floor if you do. Otherwise, I have a question for Diana. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Uh, Diana. Uh, Diana, could you um, go over your explanation again about the bonding for, I'm just trying to word this into a question. I always thought that the revenue from Bay Beach would be kind of an enterprise fund that the the bonds would pay, be paid off by park revenue or do I hear it correct that we're now going to be using the bond issue for Bay Beach to fund other park projects did I um, not, yep, not exactly not exactly what we're going to do is we're going to shift Right now, Bay Beach is responsible, all the revenues are responsible completely for the $5 million borrowing and the $2.4 million interest. So if if all else fails, we don't do anything. Um, yes, by the time the day is over, um, Bay Beach revenues need to pay $7.4 million. What we're trying to do is relieve some of the dollars that were already borrowed and won't be spent up front in the um, original phase one program. So what we're saying is we can internally, because of the way the borrowing was done, it was meant for all, any kind of park projects, the 5 million. So that allows us, it was exempt on borrowing. So what we're going to do is if 750 or so is approved next year, just of normal park projects, we are going to take what normally would have been Bay Beach's responsibilities. We are gonna basically take it off of their responsibility and put it on the city's responsibility. So instead of having by the, let's say that is approved. Next, right now, Bay Beach has a $5 million outstanding um, bond. Next year, if we move this, it's shifting it from responsibility. Now they only have, their bonding then is only 4.2 million, 4.250. And then we, the city is going to take on 750. And so it's gonna be city projects and city's going to pay for it. What that does is just relieves up Bay Beach of $750,000 of bonding that isn't being used up front. And so they're no longer responsible for it. So it is still 100% separate. Anything that's been bonded then for Bay Beach, the remaining 4250 dollars will be paid by Bay Beach. And any projects that need to be done on the park side, if we move it over physically, it's on a spreadsheet really moving the dollars. Um, that responsibility now will be for parks projects and the general fund levy will be paying for it. It's just relieving who's going to pay for that bonding. So our, but bond, gonna... our bonding rates are lower current market than what they were when the 5 million was bonded. 
That that is true. The, right now, the, the, the this year's borrowing was lower than at the t at the time. I would have to pull pull the rates. Um, but again, these we wouldn't be going out bonding on this until spring of next year. So we don't know at, at this point what rates it right. would be. So you're right. One way or another, the city could, it could be an advantage to the city slightly, or it could be a disadvantage. But overall, we're not borrowing next year six hundred seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for park projects, taking our overall outstanding debt up seven fifty. We're taking something that's already been borrowed, may not be spent right away, and we're shifting it. And then someday, if Bay Beach ever wants more money for bonding, they can go back out and they'll be responsible for that debt again. As a finance director, you think that that would be a good financial decision to to do it as presented. Um, yes, I think it helps. I think it helps overall our outstanding debt, and it certainly helps Bay Beach as um, you know things have changed from you know this proposal was put together back in seventeen and eighteen, and we know things have changed over time. So I think it's a it's a good joint effort for between the two. We're all one department. We're all one department. We're all part of the city, but we just have two different funding sources. So I think it's a good decision. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman. Uh, yes, Alder uh, Lafave. Um, yes, I forgot to ask about a walkway boardwalk on top of um, Bay Beach. Um, are you going to be raising that at all? I thought I heard it was just slightly raised and I think that you better look at, um, I, I don't know what the prediction is for next year, but I know the bay is up, but I'm sure it's probably gonna go up again. And I think that's something that you better look into now before you actually put something in so that uh, you don't have to redo it if that bay keeps going up. This is something that also I think you better check with um, the Army Corps of Engineers and see what they're talking about for the bay levels for next year. They should be able to figure out pretty soon what they're looking at. Okay, yep. thank you. We'll definitely take that Is consideration. That James, James yep. can note. Yep. Yep. Please, yep. Um, yep. Let me know on that. De definitely. And like I said, like I said in my uh, presentation, uh, the beach and bathhouse will not be installed until the water levels come down a minimum of 12 inches, mm -hmm. and that was documented um, on August 1st of this year. So based on when it was documented in August, it, until it goes down, um, you know, a minimum of 12 inches, or you know, agreed upon between you know the the parks, the mayor, and the friends of Bay Beach, uh, we will not be installing that bath and uh, beach house. No, I'm, I'm talking about the boardwalk that you're going to put on top. You know, where, where you have the black top now. Mm -hmm. um, I think you better you should really check and see what the predictions are for next year on the bay that you might be considering raising that. Now would be the time as you know when you're going to do the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, thank you all of it. Uh, and, one last thing. Oh, Walter Burnett? Yeah, and, and I, I'm sorry, Chairman and Mr. Charles, I didn't mean to kind of interrupt when you were asking him, but I, I felt as far as the letter that he wrote, that summed up his position fairly well. So if the other committees would like to hear from him, I would welcome that, but I didn't mean to interrupt when you were speaking with him. Thank you. Fine. Good. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Elder Gerlach. Can we um, uh, move to to approve both the proposed phasing plan and the proposed refinancing plan all in one, or do we have to take them separately to vote? Uh, James, you wanted them separate, didn't you? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. they're they're listed in the agenda as separate motions. So yeah, I would want them to be separate. So let's let's start with just the uh, first item. Okay, I will. Uh, Yep. Motion. I move that we um, accept or approve the staff's proposed phasing plan and budget for the Shoreline Beach project at Bay Beach Amusement Park. Second. Motion by Alder Gerlach, second by Alder Brunette. Any discussion further? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Let's give James a minute. Or 10 seconds at least. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Okay, I'll take a motion on our second item there. Move to approve. Motion to second. approve by Alder Burnett. Alder Gerlach. Any further discussion on that? 
Uh, seeing none, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Well done, everyone. And we are. Let me know when you're ready for three, James. Yep, we're ready to go. Yeah, okay. Item three consideration was possible action on the request to purchase one, that's one, skid steer loader for $39,208 from Bobcat Plus Inc., the lowest responsive, responsible bidder, bender. Uh, staff? Yep, so um, the funding uh, for the purchase of the skid steer was approved in the 2020 bond request. So $48,000 was allocated for this purchase. So what this will be doing is we'll be replacing a loader Bobcat bought in 2005. Uh, the purchasing department issued a quote for this machinery and four companies submitted a quote. Staff is proposing to purchase it from Bobcat Plus, who is the low quote. The machine was quoted out as a base model with several, several add-ons and we are proposing to purchase all of the add-ons with the exception of the fully enclosed cab with door, windows, and heat. The total, the total cost of all the approved add-ons is the $39,208. So I just want to note that we do plan on purchasing a separate 10-foot wide snow bucket for this equipment, but that will be quoted out later as an independent purchase. And the estimated cost for that additional bucket will be somewhere in the range of four dollars to $5,000. So the purchase of this skid steer is still within budget even after the purchases of the additional bucket. Any questions or a motion? I would approve. approve. We approve. Never mind. I'll second it. Okay, motion approved by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. The director's report we have before us. I don't know if everybody's taking a look at it. It's very thorough, thorough, thorough. I did have a few questions if no one else did. Go ahead. Um, the gypsy moths are back. I've got them in my yard too. Uh, I've got them surrounded by oaks. Uh, what are we doing about the gypsy moths? I noticed that it was just noted that they're back, but there wasn't really, are we, it's like we're back a decade ago. It seemed to be a citywide effort. I don't know if it was just parks or who all was all involved in that. Is that what's happening again or? It's like a bad movie trailer that doesn't go into whatever, you know. Yeah. The gypsy moths are back. Um, yeah. So I guess um, overall we're just aware that they are back. We've been getting quite a few calls on people noting that, you know, gypsy moths are back. So we'll start to uh, potentially try to focus some more of our efforts on eradicating those again. But a lot of it comes down to uh, the support that other people do um, with gypsy moths. So I think it's more education, more awareness and those kind of things. Um, you know, currently we're still, of course, battling uh, emerald ash borer. Um, yeah. So I think it's just noting that they're back and then we'll start to address those uh, concerns with citizens and, and, and more often and, and try to come up with a pl game plan for that. It, did, did we work with, I mean, I thought last time there was like even like some aerial spraying and stuff by someone and uh, was any of that, I mean, are, are we looking to work with other uh, government bodies or whoever to uh, address this issue? Yeah, I, I don't know too much specifics at this point. I definitely okay. will, I can get back to you after talking to our foresters and let you know kind of what the game plan is going forward. Yeah, I was, I was killing caterpillars like crazy, but then it seemed like a bunch of them were dying on their own. I wondered if maybe there was a aerial spray or something, but okay, thanks. Then uh, City Hall uh, Mechanical Engineering. I have no clue what that means. <laughs> <laughs> what, are... um, what uh, from what I know, and once again, I can get back you, to you with more specifics, honestly. But from what I know, is we are going through the process of uh, City Hall needs all new, I believe, electrical, and um, I don't know if HVAC is included in there. Um, mm -hmm. But I know it, it's a pretty extensive um, redo to City Hall, and in our CIP plan. Um, I believe it's where it, it will be listed to hopefully take care of some of those things. I, um, I don't think I see Corey on here still. Uh, she was working on um, working with some um, quotes to potentially get that work done currently. So we should have a better idea within the next month or so what those costs will be and we can share them with the Parks Committee. 
Okay, then the, my last question is COVID-19. Uh, we had been talking in the past when we started talking about opening up the parks and everything and some of the sports teams and everything about concerns about COVID-19. Have we uh, have we heard any reports on um, teams having any issues or, or how we stand with, uh, uh, I noticed Bay Beach, there was a, a specific uh, how it seems to be uh, we're doing well, but are we getting anything from any of the sports, sporting activities going on? So I was just uh, I was just discussing that today actually how and it's of course knock on wood here, um, but we have had a, a very good summer in terms of COVID uh, overall um, with all the amenities and services that we opened up and did provide our community. So um, I hope that continues through the rest of the summer and I really hope that keeps going in that direction. Um, there was um, one sanctioned softball group on the east side, um, youth girls that. They did decide on their own accord to actually just end their season in early July. Um, it wasn't due to any, uh, you know, circumstance with even, you know, it was just more uh, them feeling like that was the right decision for them at the time. So they chose not to go forward. Uh, we did have a few, um, from what I know, I heard of a few uh, situations where they did have a couple uh, members uh, of one of our sanctioned baseball groups that had to um, you know, they had to actually stop play for about a week um, and, and just to be on the safe side, I guess. And then they continued play after that week after they, you know, felt comfortable continuing. And they worked with uh, Brown County Health Department on those issues. Um, but overall, I would say, uh, in a general way, I can definitely say that overall it's been, uh, due to the circumstances, a good summer. Super. Excellent. Anyone else? And uh, the only thing I would like to say is if you haven't been to your mailboxes, go get your uh, park recreation and open space plan. It is excellent. You guys did an excellent, excellent job on this. It is so thorough. And uh, I mean, it, when we talk about the area, they even give the geology and the climate. I mean, the perspective, the work, it was just very thorough, very well done. Uh, my congratulations and it's really worth the read so it's in everybody's mailboxes if you didn't get yours yet go get it anything about gypsy moths in there <laughs> nothing about gypsy moths in oh there. That is all not, right no. gypsies maybe but not gypsy moth that was uh th that was printed the day before the gypsy moth call came in so <laughs> there we go there we go i'll say r real quick chairman if i could um ask james have have has the city received any complaints about bay beach or colburn or opening up facilities with covid anything that we should be aware of um you know honestly overall not not no uh, we've actually been um the comments we have received have been pretty positive when it comes yeah. to the actions that our staff and the capacity limitations and still having these amenities available for our public, but doing so in a safe uh, manner. Yeah. So overall, it's been very positive, honestly, what we've been doing, um, you know. Yeah, yeah what, what I'll say is I'll commend you and Dan and Jason and everyone in the Parks Department. My family has used Colburn at least 10 times this year, uh, just every day, there today, actually. Bay Beach last week and, and just incredible. And just the happiness that people have. People are socially distanced and being safe and wise and everyone's in good spirits. So I know that was a big decision and it took a lot of work that doesn't always get recognized, but I definitely understand and appreciate everything that you have done, James and Dan and Jason and everyone else at the Parks Department. Thank you for that. Yep. Kudos, well done. Um, with that- Chairman. Yep. Uh, okay. I have a question for James. Sure. Um, going down through your report here, um, with the schools going virtual, and you're talking about how to implement something with the K-4 program at the Wildlife Sanctuary, if there will not be a K-4 presence there at the sanctuary, can we then adjust the, uh, the deer calling and work in this area? Because as I mentioned before, I'm glad that they I'm not glad that they're going to actually kill deer, but I'm glad that they're calling it because it's, it's needed. It's not healthy for them with the, the um, ovens. But it's going to take four or five years, I think, before we notice anything. A lot of them that are staying on this end, way on this west end here. 
Yeah, so I mean, the first part of, of your comment, I guess, on the 4K. So yes, the 4K will mm -hmm. start virtually, um, but we are working hand in hand. In fact, I just got out of a meeting today, again, with the school district to discuss kind of a, a plan for, you know, a phasing plan or an approach for when we could go back or maybe a hybrid situation in the future about how we could go back and uh, mm -hmm. because the, the program is, you know, 70 to 80 percent of the time outdoors, um, you know, sure. it, it does lend itself a little bit uh, better to, um, you know, getting kids back sooner, hopefully, uh, when the, mm -hmm. the threat level mm -hmm. goes down. So uh, we are working okay. collaboratively with the school district pretty much, uh, you know, weekly here uh, to try to come up with some plans on how that looks going forward. And then I, I think the, the plan that they have for the deer calling, uh, I think, is a good plan right now. And I don't think it really, um, you know, the 4K program will really affect how that how that takes place. I think we have a good plan in place that will be uh, be positive. Because I see them coming from the entrance and down a little ways. Um, from Dan's down going west, that's basically where we're getting them coming through to our properties down here. So I don't, I, see, I don't, I don't know where they're all conjugating, you know, at night where they go or, or where, how they move in the sanctuary. But a lot of them, even during the day, they're out here and they head towards the entrance. So they might be staying more in this portion over here, which affects my and my neighbor's property. Yeah, that's so like I say, uh, by the time you do get to the, all the calling, because it's going to take it's going to take you a couple of years, more yeah. than that maybe because of the overabundance. It's going to take, I bet, four or five years before we don't see deer come on over here again. Yeah, we can definitely reach and, out. And if... I will say something: uh, we're spending a lot of money, mm -hmm. spraying, spraying, and it's still not helping. They're still eating. Yeah, and they're eating stuff that they never ate before in my yard. Well, we can we we'll look at we we'll look at that as it you know as the culling happens and we can you know uh, work that that's, as that's I want them to look at that if there's yep. a possibility okay yeah definitely yep. uh, make a motion to receive and place on file motion to receive and place on file second second by Alder Gerlach all in favor aye aye opposed okay our next meeting is September 9th. I will just end it with. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear that the star for the falling star has fallen. <laughs> That's the way it goes. And with that, <laughs> I, I, no, I, I second that because that was one of my favorite rides. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Gerlach. Second. Pregnant by Alder Burnett. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. We'll begin. begin. I've got.